This is an X230, and this is also an X230. Both of these machines were introduced in 2012 with third generation Ivy Bridge processors. For a decade prior, the ThinkPad X series was the smallest and most compact laptop that was sold by IBM and then later Lenovo after the ThinkPad line was purchased from IBM. While these laptops are small in the X and Y plane, in the Z direction, they are not so small, especially compared to other laptops that were being released in 2012. This was also when the first generation ThinkPad Carbon X one was released which was Lenovo's new ultra-thin laptop, ushering in a new era of ultrabooks, which is one of the most common styles of laptops today. As for laptops like these X230s, this was the last year Lenovo would produce ThinkPads with styling that mimics IBM-designed ThinkPads. The year after, the ThinkPad X240 was released with a new, more streamlined design. Compared to the new Carbon X1 line, the X2 series line was thicker and more intended for businesses since it could work with a docking station and be optioned with a smart card reader. While it's sad to see the design of ThinkPads change, it makes sense from a business perspective since the majority of consumers who want to buy a new laptop want something that looks modern and not something that looks like it was made in 1997. However, those who love the classic design could still use these computers. And even though they are now 12 years old, they are still capable of running a modern operating system. It's entirely possible that Lenovo could have completely abandoned the IBM styling much sooner than they have. But because it continued so late, both of these models are still decently capable of basic office tasks with the possibility to upgrade the RAM to a maximum of 16 gigabytes. While neither of these computers were made for gaming, the integrated HD 4000 graphics are still capable of a few older and lighter games, although you should not expect great performance. Both of these computers don't have a hard drive installed in the hard drive bay, that's because I've installed mSATA SSDs in the cellular card port underneath the palm rest. These SSDs offer a substantial performance upgrade over the original hard drives that would have come with them. Although I could install secondary hard drives in those bays for extra storage if I wanted to. The CPUs for these models are non-upgradable. But as they are getting old, you might want to get to the CPU and apply fresh thermal paste, which would require removing the motherboard. Each laptop also has two water drain ports, which are used to channel water from the spill-resistant keyboards. Also, while we're here, might as well take a look at the pen mechanism for the tablet model. These X230s have a few differences when it comes to the design and shape. For starters, the tablet version is a little bit larger than the regular version, with the rear section expanding about one centimeter more past the exhaust vent on the side. The regular X230 has a slightly angled palm rest in the center with a much steeper angle on the front while the tablet version has a much more flat palm rest with rubber pads that contact the screen bezels when it closes. It also has rubber stabilization tabs on the side edges, which usually break off on these models. Fortunately, this one still has the originals. Of course, all these differences are mostly so that the tablet can be put into tablet mode, which has a nice pressure sensitive Wacom touchscreen built in. OneNote works well on this computer with the ability to write down notes and draw as well. The pressure sensitivity makes writing appear more smoothly and you can always flip the pen around and erase it. It also has speakers in the display bezel and it could have come with a fingerprint reader to the side as well. The regular X230 has the fingerprint reader in the palm rest while the speakers are at the bottom and meant to be bounced off the surface it's sitting on. 
The regular X230 has a nice light up keyboard with two different levels of brightness. It also has the Think light, which is on the top bezel and shines down on the keyboard. The 2012 generation of ThinkPads was the last to come with Think lights and the only one to come with both a Think light and a light up keyboard. However, this tablet version does not have either. Both of these ThinkPads come with sweet, sweet VGA goodness. The regular version has its screw holes covered up, while the tablet version has its holes out in the open. The regular version has a mini display port as another video output, while the tablet version has a full-size display port. Both these ThinkPads have USB 3.0, which was only on the i7 models the year before. USB 3.0 is about 10 times faster than the USB 2.0. They were also the last ThinkPads to come with 26-pin, 54mm express card slots, allowing port expansion and other archaic modules to be inserted. Both these laptops have a battery that sticks out in the shape of a cut cylinder. However, the regular X230 has a larger capacity battery. This is because the tablet version needs to have the battery sectioned off to make room for the center hinge base, whereas the regular version just has a smooth three rows of three cells, each for a total of nine cells. They both have 1366 by 768 resolutions, which is considered low by today's standards so not a whole lot can fit on the screen, although it can always be expanded with an external monitor. The X230 regular was also upgraded to a nicer IPS display, which you can see is much better than this ghastly TN display. There is also the X230 Ultra Base, which can be used for port expansion and charging. It has a connector that hooks into the bottom and a lever on the side that is used to eject it. Next to the eject lever, there is a red indicator light, which indicates that the ThinkPad does not give you consent to pull the eject lever. If you want to eject your ThinkPad, you should ask for consent first, which you can do by pushing the eject button next to the indicator. The indicator light will turn off once consent is given. On the other side, there is a hot swappable CD drive that can be ejected by pulling and flipping the pull tab release switch and then pulling the tab to take out the drive. You could also insert a secondary hard drive there as well. There is also a set of keys for this ultra base. Actually, it's just used to lock and unlock the ultra base so that it can't be detached if you don't want it to. There were also the ThinkPads X220 and X220 tablets that were one year older than these ones, which have the classic style keyboard and are nearly identical other than that and the palm rest. And yes, these are both not great performance or great energy efficiency compared to most modern computers. But modern computers just don't have the same charm that a lot of older ThinkPads have. While neither of these laptops has the classic style keyboard, it's still among the greatest ThinkPads and is sure to be a future classic because of how it marked a time in history when both ThinkPads and other laptop brands made styling choices that aim to conform with every other brand rather than having their own styling that distinguishes them and makes them unique. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day.